Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Trading on margin, utilizing leverage can carry even higher level of risk and can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market or using any of our software alert products, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal investment objectives, level of experience, and risk tolerance. There is a possibility that you could potentially sustain significant loss. You should not invest any capital or trade that you cannot afford to lose. It is your responsibility to be aware of and understand all risks associated with foreign exchange trading and to seek professional advice from an independent certified financial advisor if you have any doubts. Avoria Prime does not exercise trading authority over your trades. You and you alone exercise discretionary trading authority over every trade. And good morning. Welcome to the Hawkeye session. Today is Friday, uh, January 8th. And we're going to be going to about 930 this morning. Yeah, keep in mind that we have a non-farm payroll report coming out at 830, which is going to be about another 30 minutes. And we'll kind of watch. We probably won't trade that so much, but we'll watch and see how it reacts. Uh, a lot of it's uh, see how the market reacts with the uh, with that. It's usually one of the bigger moving announcements of the month. That's usually always on the first Friday at 8.30 of the month. Uh, since last Friday was uh, New Year's, I get this is going to be the first one. So anyway, uh, the disclaimers, we go through that and then we'll get to the charts. Right now, the trade in the foreign exchange on margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. The high degree of leverage can work against you as well as for you. Before deciding to invest in the foreign exchange, you should carefully consider your investment objective, level of experience, and risk appetite. The possibility exists that you could sustain a loss of some or all of your initial investment, and therefore you should not invest money that you cannot afford to lose. You should be aware of all the risks associated with the foreign exchange trading and seek advice from an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. This is a live trading room. It is for educational purposes only. No financial advice or recommendations will be provided. Any trade taken during the live session is not a recommendation or a suggestion that you should also do the same. Past performance is not indicative of future results. Do not trade money that you cannot afford to lose. And before trading live, always operate with a written trade plan that identifies the rules for entries, exits, targets, and risk management. And with that, we will go to the charts. And uh, I'm going to go to the uh, arrow charts. We'll just kind of scroll through that a little bit real quick to see. Actually, no, before I do that, we're going to go to the um, Forex factory to check out the um, news for the day. And that's on number four. My screen's got switched around here somehow over the week. So we have the Forex factory. This shows us all the news announcements. We're on Tuesday, January 8th, or today is January 8th, which is Friday. And you can see at 8.30, we have a whole bunch of red folders here, the CAD and the US dollar. This is for the uh, uh, non-farm payroll report, which is right here. And so we got a lot of red folders. We would stay out of the, uh, probably stay out of the CAD trades or uh, actually I'm in a CAD trade right now. I'll probably be out of it before the report. It uh, seems to be working quite nicely. And, uh, but was, we wanna be careful of these pairs right now. Yeah, uh, if we look and see where my, as we move, move on, I was looking at the RCS, uh, uh, the relative currency strength indicators, and I'm seeing that the Swiss is strong on all four time frames: the one hour, the 30, the 15, and the five. And the CAD is the weakest on the one hour. It's the weakest on the 30. It's the weakest on the 15, and it's also the weakest on the five. So that's a pretty good idea to trade the Swiss against the CAD going to the Swiss strength. Come over here to the chart. And as I look and see where the overnight session was, and that's pretty much right here. Here's where the overnight session started. Here's the body of the lowest candle before we got to three o'clock. This is three o'clock is where the London opened. And so we have this range. It broke out of the range uh, showing CAD's with, uh, CAD's or Swiss strength. Swiss is the second currency of the Swiss cat pair. That means that that's going to, if that's the strongest pair, it's going to be, we're going to be looking at going short. We have a nice little trend line coming right here from, uh, here's a nice little move out. Here's a retest, came back. Here's where the origin of the strong move up before the overnight session, that was yesterday's close. And so we're going to be looking at this thing coming down, possibly down to this area for a target. Uh, as it bounced, it, it kind of closed, bounced off of the trend line, off of the um, 30 moving average. It pulled back, back in towards this zone. And then I took a buy stop and I took a sell, a sell stop 
right this area and I'm just about ready to hit my target. Keep in mind, there's a two pip spread on this thing, which is which is about my limit of where I'm willing to take a spread. But by 8.30, I should be pretty much out of this trade. I could probably stay in it longer because I think with the announcement, I think it's a good chance it's going to come down. But I'm not going to push it anymore. And right now, it came down. The spread did not get me out, so I'm going to take myself out of this thing. As when I got into that trade, I put a, a sell stop in. And it didn't even come into my sell stop, but the spread filled me about two pips earlier than I would have liked to have been filled. And the same situation, what happened is it's got to break through two pips of your target in order to get taken out. If I see it's starting to cake there and it won't take me out because of the spread, it's just time to exit that trade. Now, this thing may come back up and retest this trend line. And if it does, it may come back down to the uh, our, whoops, our demand zone over here which was pretty much, I used this wick. What I did is I used the, bottom, the lowest wick here. And then I see where it broke the, this red candle, closed up, and then it came back down. If I look and see where the wicks are, this wick off well, this candle right here, if you go right to the bottom of the wick, it falls right into the body of that. So right there, this tells me that this is where all the buyers came in. And this is where the buyers uh, started taking over. So this would be the area that I'm looking at right now for a demand zone to come back and retest this area. And we'll just go ahead and lock all those up and we'll see what happens. Going, uh, so that's what we had right there with the CAT Swiss. And that's how we use it with the our RCS tool to try to determine which pair is the strongest, which is the weakest, how consistent is that over the four time frames, and try and get the most consistency. Uh, the, the Swiss US would have been a possibility. Swiss is strong on all four again. The US dollar is second to the weakest, is second to the weakest here. Third, it's in the lower third here, it's in the lower third here, and it's in the lower third. So we could probably go with the Swiss US pair as well. But again, you don't want to do it right now because we're coming up on the non-farm payroll report today. If, this were, if, we're not, if this is just a normal trading day, I would be looking at that pair next as a possibility. And we can go ahead and uh, take a look at that. Come over here with the Swiss, US Swiss, which is right here. And again, you see Swiss, the second currency of the pair, showing the strength to the downside. Come over here to our 15 minute chart, see where we are with our, see if we can find a trend line that might work. We had a, here's yesterday, this is today's over, overnight session. Here's yesterday's move. Here's the low, here's the high, yesterday's high. Made a little bit higher high, so there's a little bit of a trend line going up on the top of this. Here, a little trend line going up here, take it up, take it up a little bit higher. Maybe take this one down back a little bit lower, see how many of these hits we can come up with. There's a nice little hit, here's a hit, here's a hit. Validates that trend line. Come down to the bottom, we have, here's a low, here's a higher low, here's a higher low. We'll see how that works for a trend line. Here's the anchor, here's a hit, here's a hit. Here's our channel, it's coming down, it's breaking through the 30 minute uh, exponential moving average but it's also coming very close to, we'll see how it bounces off of this. If it bounces off of this, we may be able to catch it along going this way, but if it breaks, then we're looking at a target somewhere down around in, I would say probably in this area where we have, where it broke the sideways motion. I would go from here to this area, right about to the top of over this area. I'd be using this for a target zone. And when, this non-foreign payroll report comes out, this might be the area, if it can break down and if the dollar can show some weakness with this non-foreign payroll report and it comes down here and tags in here, this might be the place to take it long. But right now we're gonna stay out of it until after the report. And that's what we have on that one. So right now there's no trade here yet. And I, again, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna take any trades while the reports, uh, while we're waiting for the report to come out. Excuse if we me, take, Al. Yes. 
I just want to, I'm just confirming whether or not it's Open Mic Friday. Oh, it is Open Mic Friday. So, yeah, anybody that wants to, uh, and we are encouraged people to open your mics, ask questions, uh, either give us comments or ask questions so that we can clarify some things that we may not uh, make clear what we, as we go through some of these things. Sometimes you go through a little bit faster. Um, and maybe I go too fast, maybe I go too slow, but just give me some feedback so we can help uh, make this room as useful for uh, everybody that's attending as possible. We're here to uh, be of service and uh, the best, more information we get back from, uh, from the audience, from the attendees, the better we can serve you. Uh, let me go to the uh, arrow alerts uh, alerting tools let me switch my screen here as well as a question that someone may ask can help us um, may help somebody that listens to the recording that's exactly right and so if we go to our arrow uh, we have can anybody see our arrow screen can you see that okay yes. you go. Everybody? Yeah. okay so we had the last uh, the last alert we had was on the U.S. Uh, uh, basically, it's the S&P 500 index against the U.S. dollar, and that was uh, a sell. So let's go and put that on and see how that what that looks like. Most of the ones I've seen so far this morning weren't tradable, and again, this is not tradable. As we look at the to announce, I could just look at this right now and say we're not we're not going to trade this. We have three green zones below. We have two red zones above. So that means that there's more upward pressure than lower pressure. But you see right now it's sandwiched in between this red zone. And so this would be the supply zone. This would be a demand zone. It's sandwiched in between. We got the arrow. This was a sell. But you can see we're right. There's, there's not enough room to really take this trade uh, before you run into another zone. So we're just going to pass on this. And you can see this is the price action pretty much getting ready to wait and see what happens with this uh, non-farm payroll report. You're going to find out a lot of the prices are going to be staying pretty range bound until after the report, especially anything that's U.S. paired or has anything to do with the U.S. Uh, markets. And uh, so, again, we'll just stay out of this. Even if we had an up arrow over here, no room to take the trade to run to a, uh, to a red zone. We had a down arrow over here again no room to run into the green zone it came out of the green zone bounced but all it did was give us another bounce off of the spread zone so right now it's just going sideways no it's not tradable so we're just going to pass on that if we go and look through some of the other charts that we have and just go through we'll just analyze some of these and uh, again the uh, you can see where the the what we call the money zone. Again, it's in a very narrow range. Uh, we're looking at on this, uh, this is the British Aussie pair. And you can see that the overall range of the, what we call the money zone is really basically from, uh, the range is only, Basically, it's uh, 65, uh, looks like 65 pips wide, which that's enough room, but we're not really looking at, now this, right now we just got an alert on the, let's see, the British Aussie, do we have that? That was down here at, uh, on the hour. This one actually is, this one might be tradable. I'm going to stay out of it though, because I don't want to trade the non-farm payroll report. But this would be a trade of, under normal situations, this would be a tradable trade that looks the way it looks like. So can we set it up so that we can see what it actually does do? Like maybe uh, where you could, would have your entry and stuff. Yeah, that. right now here would be, here's the arrow. So the, the current uh, 15 minute, and said, this is on a 15 minute chart. The current 15 minute candle is green. And so you would be entering right here. The target would be up here. This is, uh, how many pips is that? That's uh 80 to 74, 80, that's uh, 73 pips. Wow. That's not a, that's a pretty good, well, I'll tell you, it might be worth just taking a shot at this one. But we're only going for 20 though, right? We're only going for 20 pips. 
It does fit the criteria. The only, if it wasn't for non-farm payroll, I would be a little bit, I would be all over this one. And yeah. actually, I think this one's probably going to work out okay. Probably take her on a demo, my friend. Yeah. yeah be uh, okay, I'll I'll take it on the demo. And actually, this. You know what? Yeah, put count. no emotion in it, and if it goes, it goes. Just play like it is. So we're gonna buy it. Here we go. We're in it. Upset my 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 target. So I've got my I'm modifying it. So here's my stop, forty pip stop. Here's my twenty pip target. And here we go. And there's our. So we have our stop loss. We have our take profit. And we're going to see all it's all has to do is come up here and tag that red line, and we're good. It really does have a lot of room to the upside. Excuse me, Al. Yes. I know later on down the road, um, this is something that we'll learn. However, it may be interesting just to throw out there for everybody that um, prior to three, if you go three arrows over to the left from the end. Three okay. arrows over from. Um, yes. Yeah, now go right there. Where where it says arrow uh, pips. Oh, uh -huh. word. Okay, yeah. Um, you see how underneath it, it has those um, small candles, small red candles. Okay, um, uh, strategy six, I believe it's called bank induction. And what it is, is that you have um, four to six candles that are very tight and small together. Which and then all these, right, all these right here. The no, the red ones, the red ones that are on your yeah, right there, right, right. right before yeah, right at the beginning of the, yeah, exactly those that group, okay. right at the beginning of the London, um, and so then um, what you do is that the first candle that goes above, you don't need an arrow, in order an arrow in order to do the arrow. <laughs> process because by having that all those small candles that way and uh -huh. if you go above the moving average you Which can take it to right that here. side yes like after that uh, reddish pinkish the pinkish candle that's the above the moving wrist? average yeah this now you here. go to the first green one you enter right here yes before so if it, the one that came up prior to when it produced the arrow but okay. in other times, it may not produce the arrow right away. So that's why they say that if you get a, the next candles that go above that leave those short, bright ones, little guys, I mean, uh, and it goes above the moving average, and then your second candle above the moving average. So does the candle have to close above the moving average? Yes. So basically, this one wouldn't work because it didn't close above it. This right. one works because it closed above it, even though right. there's no arrow. Right. You can still take it because of because because it came out of this zone right here. Correct. Okay. Oh, that's good to know that. I didn't uh, see that strategy yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You see that strategy number six? I I believe so. It's it's called yeah. bank induction. There's basically that I'm positive. Though. There's basically <laughs> uh, if you subscribe to this arrow. Uh, product uh there's a uh, with in the back office of avoya prime you'll see the strategies and he, he goes through all the different strategies there's there's i think there's a total of about 10 strategies right now on how to trade this right now we're just focusing on pretty much just the one which is basically do you have 20 pip uh, a range uh from the entry to now this thing just i don't think this was here no that just popped up that just popped up but yeah. we were already in the trade. So, but at the time we took this trade, this this red zone was not there. So uh, you have to keep that in mind. So right now it's sort of like right now I have to pretty much get through this zone in order to make this thing happen. The target originally the the zone. If this thing can break through this zone, this would be the next target. Right now my twenty pips is just on the just at the end of this uh, zone. But we do have some upward pressure. Uh, if we look at our RCS tool and uh, just see where this pair looks, what this pair looks like, uh, the British Aussie. Right now, the British is the second strongest pair on the three highest time frames, and the Aussie is the weak in the bottom three of the 30 and 15 minutes. So, it's uh, it's not as conclusive as the other trades that we were looking at, but it's still not too bad. 
uh, we're in this trade, so we're just going to uh, play it out. Again, like I said, I'm taking this on a demo only because to see if it works out. That was before this red zone was here. And uh, like I said, I hesitated taking it because of the non-farm payroll coming out. But, yeah, he did have a contingency minutes. plan for this, um, Al. He did say that if a zone pops up like this, as soon as your price hits the zone, then manually close it. So then I'd be without to getting back. to the actual take profit yet. So we, so we take back this off to that area. So right now we yeah. just have a, a little, yeah. And that, and that makes a lot of sense because it's, if it comes up, it's probably going to come up and retest this area. Yeah, because this will happen from time to time, he was saying. Uh, but uh, as soon as it hits the zone, just manually close it out. Don't wait yeah. for it to get to the planned 20 pips. You're better off with five or 10 than nothing. Yeah. And if it comes down and closes below this, then I'll be out of it. I'll, I'll probably won't let it go away the full 40 pips. I'm gonna give it the room for the report, uh, but I'm going to, uh, I'll watch it real close as far as that goes and I'll be out of it before it hits that 40 pips more than likely. So we so see we still have another 10 minutes before the report. And we'll see what happens. Let's see, it looks like the last uh let's see again our last uh, alert was on the uh US five hundred, uh the S P five hundred with a buy. Let's go take a look at that one. Again, in the zone, we don't want to take that right now. Too close. So that's the same one we looked at earlier. Yeah, so with these zones being so close, that's just indicative that it's ranging right now, right? Yeah, exactly. British Aussie, let's get back to our British Aussie. And it's just getting itself set up for the, uh, for the non-farm payroll report. The dollar moves, uh, I mean, a lot of the, uh, especially like with the Eris, uh, Iris uh, alerts we had, those were all US based. Everything was based to the US dollar. Uh, these are a little bit uh, a little bit different. We have uh, cross currency pairs with like the British yen and the British CAD and the British Aussie. A lot of them are British based pairs and Euro based pairs. But we have basically the Euro, the British, and the US, all which are trading inside the money zone, which is basically the London open to the uh, noon around the uh, US dollar, uh, US uh, market. And if you just stick to trading in the, this uh, time frame, uh, you'll find out that your success rate will probably be fairly high, just using this, uh, the basic technique of, do you have room to the, because most of these markets are going sideways. But in that sideways market, they're, they're, they're trending on lower time frames. So like right now, you can look in, at this 15 minute chart and it's really, it's basically going sideways right now in between that red zone and the green zone uh, down below. It's good, but you see where it does have a little bit of a trend. It comes back down, test it, goes back up, test it, come back down, test it. Eventually it will break out like you did over here. It was basically still going sideways between here, but came back down it was trending down on a sideways, even though it's still inside this sideways range. You never know because it seems to be doing like uh, the last one was a higher high. Although uh, this was, yeah, as it, was well. little, it was a little bit higher high, although it didn't really close above. If we draw this, as we're looking at some of our technicals here, here's a close right here. This was the high, this was a lower high. This high right here, it really didn't close. It's just wicked up into this area, which is basically where this thing was developed. Mm -hmm. And I would expect that once it comes back up, there's probably gonna find some more sellers. So that's why we don't wanna give this a lot of room. If it can get anywhere close to that uh, target zone, I'll just close this trade out. Especially if it gets up there just before the uh, 8.30 announcement. And if you move it down a little bit, even a little bit further down, if I can do that, uh, you'll see that uh, here's the the high, here's the lower high, here's the here's the 
body of this candle. And actually it did close up a little bit higher over here than this. We actually do have a little higher closes. So from a trend line standpoint, you could uh, you could probably argue the fact of using this for a trend line. If I can draw this the right direction. Try this again. See if I can change the color of this and make it a little bit easier to see, keep it more consistent with what we've been doing all along. Colors. Indicator. Objects, here we go, it's an object. And if I scroll down, I should be able to see where my trend line is. Maybe. Huh. Let's try this again. You should be able to change the color of that trend line. Trend line properties, here we go. Now we're going to make this aqua. There we go. That's my standard color for the trends. Let's try this again. And this is our, this is the, the low. Here's a hit, higher. So we have a high, higher high, low, higher low. Here's our cha upper channel. And it would make sense that right now it's trading inside this channel. The questions will get up here be on this report to get our target in here. And let me see how this looks on the trading view charts, British Aussie. Are you looking on trading view? Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm trying to get my trading uh, view chart up and oh. seeing where it is on the trading view. So let me do that. Let me switch over, switch screens here. Then we'll just take a look at the same pair, this British Aussie pair uh, on my trading view chart and we'll see what that looks like. Uh, let me mark some of these areas before I switch it over. Anybody have any questions so far of what we're doing? So far, so good. And so here's the trade view. Here's the overnight. Uh, this is the new the new day session, and you can see that from yesterday's low to yesterday's high, we're well inside that range as we're basing in here. Everybody sees my trade view start, correct? Yes. Yes, we do. Okay. So if I'm going to, if I look and see where the overnight session is from, here's the daybreak. Here's the, this is the basically the overnight high. I'm going to take it back to three o'clock in the morning. So actually let me get my vertical line here. Three o'clock is where the London session opens up. There's the London session. Here's the session from the overnight high, overnight low. I'm going to draw a box around that. I'm going to just keep it right, I'm going to leave the wicks out. Just bring it to the top of the. Uh, now let's take it to these wicks. I'm just going to take it to the wicks. I still like the wicks. 
And you can see that right now, here's where it came back out, came back in here, base, base. If you even look and see where it kind of broke out just before the London session opened up, this was a pre-London session. What it broke out, gave a little bit of head fake, came up, gave a little head fake. So right now, this these are what I would call the the demand zone here. And I would call these the top part of this area of the supply zone. And I'm gonna come over here a little bit where this uh, strong move down came back up and see where it, how far it went up into the, it, it, it couldn't, penetrate into this zone during the overnight session. It did just after the London open, it came right up in here. So I'm gonna call this our, our supply zone. And this is a range that we're working in. My target for that trade that we uh, that we took, the, we got in at uh, the price we got in at was uh, 174. We'll call it 174.90. Let me see if I can get this into a four digit number here. Uh, 174. Let's see. There we go. That should take care of that. So 174.90, so that's right about here is where we got, where we entered this trade. Our target was, is right now at 174.97, that's our seven pips. Uh, 174.97. That's where our target is, right here. By, and this is right where that zone was de was was uh, developed. Make this our target. And our stop is way down below. On the stop is at one seventy four forty seven. Seventy four forty seven, which is right about in about here. Seventy-four forty-seven, right there. Pretty much right in, in line with this little demand zone. There's our stop. If it comes back down, we may actually want to keep our stop a little bit on the other side, but the rules say 40 pips. That's what we're going to do right now. And stay within the rules. This is target one. This is the entry. And we're coming up on, actually the non-farm payroll report is just out now, it's 8.30 right now. We should have the report out. Let's see what it says. A lot of news right now, eh? I'm not, let's see if I can refresh this. Reload, try that. Oop, that didn't work. That's taking a sweet time. Yeah, seems to be. <laughs> huh. Well, let's see. I'll well, try something else here.
Where's Aussie is the pair. Let's see, let's see how we'll keep an eye on that. I'm doing another chart here to see if I can mm -hmm. pull the factory up. It's having technical difficulties. Yeah, and that's, why the report, that's why the report didn't come out because it's having technical difficulties. So right now you can see where, as, as our technical analysis goes, so, and we were looking at uh, the arrow alert, uh, and we're just seeing how the technicals are actually looking at this, other than the trades that we, I mean, as we take the trades, there's specific rules. You get the arrow. We had an arrow on the, be the fourth candle over. So we've got an arrow on this section. This candle right here is where the arrow came in. The entry was on right here at the open of the next candle, which is right about where it is right now. We have a four, five pip spread. Look at the spread on that thing right now. That's all relative to this, uh, the movement going on right now with the uh, report coming out. And so I don't like trading when there's a, I don't like more than a two pip spread. But as these reports come out, you'll see how the brokers are changing the spread to accommodate their their needs and the volume of coming in at different price ranges. But this is varying between, I mean, it was about two pips when we started and now it's up, it's, I've seen the four or five pip spread on this thing. So you just want to give it the wiggle room till the news comes mm -hmm. out and everything settles down. You don't want to let them take your take your stop because of the spread, especially if they just widen the spread quite a bit. No, just let it settle down. Right now, everything's still showing uh, as a long right now as, as it's above the 30 day moving average or 30, 30 uh, minute uh, 62. Now we did come up, we have, we have do have a hook. So this was where the little pullback is coming in. If you look at our five minute chart, and what we're doing is we're just showing you the price action of the uh, alert system uh, just see so you can see how you can maybe help it's very cut and dry how to make the entries where the targets and what the stops are if you want to become a little bit more advanced of a manual trader you'll be able to go to some other charts and see how the price action of these moves are and you can maybe go for get uh, maybe smaller stops and maybe a uh, lot bigger targets uh, Rather than just selling for a 40 pip stop or a 20 pip target, you may be able to get a 15 or 20 pip uh, stop and maybe a 60, 70 pip target uh. by having the uh, the knowledge base of manual trading. But for the the quick and uh, the quick down and dirty is that you just get the arrow, you have room to the top, Thank like you. what we did. Let me go and change the screens here. So down and dirty is you get the you get the arrow. Where's my cursor? You get the arrow. You get the arrow. The arrow is generated on the close of this candle. You come over here. You you enter if you have twenty pips to the next zone. And th at the case when we took this trade, we did. Uh, this was a fill. This was a spread on the fill. Uh, we got we didn't get a very good fill on this one. And what you could possibly do, just do a limit order when you see these uh, like that, just say uh, where the alert came in, you say, okay, what was the price at the alert? And just go into a limit order to get filled mm -hmm. at that alert. That way, if it runs away from you, you're not chasing it. Wait for it to come to you, get in. This zone developed after we got into the trade. So we're not gonna exit the trade at just because this entered, not at this point, not while it's still uh, working out, especially knowing that the report's coming out. If this thing comes down and closes below this blue line, then with this up here, then I'll probably get out. Of the, then I will get out of the trade. And 
Any questions? And the price action still says that it's still a, a long. Mm -hmm. Is I looking at the trading view charts? Let me go back to the trading view. Yeah, I think it might still go up. Yeah, I still think it's got room to the upside, so I'm not too worried about this one. We have all of our moving averages are, it, we have a close above the 30 moving average. We have all the moving averages on the 5, 15, and 30 are all in the right direction on the 15 minute for 62. On the five minute chart, all of our moving averages, we have the green, the yellow, and the purple, all in the right direction going to the long side. Nice candle right here coming in. We have, we had a lots of wicks coming down below the one minute 62. And right now it's retesting this zone up here. And if you're looking at our fib lines that we uh, often look at, you'll see that there is a red fib line right here, which would be, a, which is right above where our target is. Uh, you know, John, and then, you know, um, we're just about uh, we're coming about breaking even right now. This is where our entry was. And so we're just looking at just, we, we did uh, back off our target I, just a little bit here. It looks like it wants to go. <laughs> yeah, it does want to go, but it's also finding some buyers coming in right there. Yeah. And uh, it's trying real hard, lots of action. You can see, when you see these little spikes like that, that's uh, a lot of times, you can look at the spread on this thing coming in right now. Uh, three, uh, two, I just saw five just a couple seconds ago. So right now it's the spread that's being changed around. It's not so much the buyers and sellers coming in, it's just that they're, they're changing the spread to take people's orders is what they're doing. Can't trust them. <laughs> <laughs> But here's our here's our green zone. Here's our five minute red zone. Once it gets up here, it's going to be right up into the supply. So we'll see. Right now, it's it's ranging just about halfway between these. Um, you're probably on your other chart, Al. We've got your uh, arrow chart up. Oh, you still have the arrow chart. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, I never did click the button. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There you go. That's better. But here's our here's our red zone. Here's our green green fib line on the five minute. Pretty sure that's five minute. Yep, that's on the five minute. And these zones right now are twenty pips apart, twenty one pips apart. Well, it's still looking good for a long, so let's yeah, see. I mean, it, we're not getting any close below these moving averages. The five, I'm not too worried about the five. If I see the five crossing the the yellow one and closing below the yellow one, uh, that might be a sign that things are starting to change. But right now, it still has enough. We still have a, a our, if we draw our wedge on this, here's our high. Here's our low. There's a higher high, and actually just sort of basin up here. There's this a little bit higher high, and here's the bottom. This is a low. If it if I if it comes down and breaks below the, the where the D is, I'll probably just go ahead and exit this trade and take take a small loss. But we have a little zone right in here. Here's the wick high. So here's a low, here's a high, here's a lower high, here's a higher low. Now we have a higher high, so it is starting to have a, it's a little bit of an upward channel. And this A is right about where we got in. You see it's really struggling to get up. And if this breaks the D, I'm out of this trade. It's T 
teasing you. Yeah, it is. It's, it's pretty it's, uneventful it's, right now. What's going on? Well, it's uh, it's Friday. I know, but it's it's literally lame. And it's snowing. Yes. We just just started snowing. They're calling for snow tonight. It looks like it's going to happen. Well, you can keep it. I've had enough already. This is our first snowfall for the year. Yep, I've had enough. You guys can keep it all. What are we keeping? Snow. Oh, the snow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've we've had plenty. I'm sure uh, some of us have had more than in in the attendees, even more than us here, Matt, in Ontario. Oh yeah. Well, we've got uh, Leslie's from Manitoba, I believe. She's. Oh, I didn't know she's from Manitoba. Yeah. Oh, look at all the Canucks out here. Yeah. Hey, we rule. Oh, Alberta. Sorry, Leslie. <laughs> she's from Alberta. Ah, uh, that's bad. One province over. <laughs> I think two. Oh, dude. How is it two? Yeah. Saskatchewan and then Alberta. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I think I know the U.S. geography better than my own. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I like about even uh, with this right now, all of our moving, all of our RSIs are coming down here to the lower range. Now we're starting to get a hook on the three now uh, three period RSI. If we can get this blue one to cross over and both the orange and the blue to be pointing up. We should be. Uh, this should be the end of this little pullback to maybe get our target up here. And you see that the moving, this green moving average came down. It hasn't crossed over the yellow. It came down, bounced right off the five, five minutes 62. And it, we're getting a bounce off of that. So we're just going to hang into this trade. We're going to be patient with it. Yeah, it's still in the game. It's still in the game. It hasn't given us any reason to get out yet. It's, it's not coming anywhere close anywhere near our stop. Now, and if I look and see where these wicks are, as we look to the left over here, we'll see like, let me just draw this out here. Here's a wick and we come over, we keep it running into wicks, wicks. Here's a wick come down. There's another wick coming down. As it comes down, it there's another wick Right about here is right about where we first run into a body of the candle. So unless it's as long as it stays above this blue line right here, I'm still okay with this trade. Now I so say we have to keep in mind we have a red zone sitting right where our target is, and this is we have a red zone that was drawn on the uh, arrow indicator box, but that's pretty much in the same area where my supply zone was drawn, and that's what probably would generated that. Uh, that zone. You scroll all the way over here. And this is right where the, this is the zone. Actually, if you look and see, this is where we had a little bit of a wick over wick on this five minute. This could still be a potential target, but we have all this area here to get through. We had a wick up here that just, but we couldn't get the close above. And that's why I kind of like this as the origin of the zone. And this is actually the bottom of the candles that generated this uh, big down move. And it came back up and retested right here. It came back down, almost tested here. It came back down, retested here. So this was tested once, twice. So this is a relatively strong zone right now. This retested twice and really the highest, highest this zone is penetrated right now is this candle right here. Each time it comes up, it should penetrate a little bit deeper if it's going to break through the top. If not, it's going to be ending up shorter, which in this case, here was the high. This one came up. And we have a trend line pretty much going from here. to here. And we have, a, the, here's our wedge. And it's right now, it's playing, the playground is right inside this area. 
Here's a low, here's a high, here's a higher low, here's a lower high. And I'll probably make a higher low, a lower high, higher low, lower high until it comes all the way out and eventually it's gonna break. Our stop is way down here. Our target is just sitting right up here at the top. Excuse me a moment. Actually, kind of look at this as being a little bit of a trap area right in here. So if it comes up to this trap area and I can't get my target, I'll just get out of this trade, knowing that this zone is up here. I guess there haven't been any other alerts either, eh? On no, it's been pretty quiet. It's, again, it's... Uh, it's a Friday, and a lot of people are still in, kind of in the vacation. They're not quite ready to get back to work mode yet. Well, next week it should all get back to normal, hopefully. Yep. This is the close. So uh, this is actually where this candle is. This is really where the entry should have been, right in this area. Ooh, look at that move south. Yep. Boom, that's exactly what I needed. You need it? <laughs> yep. I said the only reason I took this trade was one, you guys talked me into it, and two, that I wanted to show you what it was looking like since it was a demo. Hey, Mel. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. I'm, I'm sorry. See, I'm not supposed to talk about my strategy that I'm doing. So, it or not? <laughs> no. Anyway, I'll just not tell until, you this. Not until it's proven, not until it's proven and vetted. Yeah. yeah can't really. I'll, I'll just tell you this my, my take profit on that trade, uh, well, British uh, AUD, right? Was it GBP AUD? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So my take profit is 1.7460. 1 1.7460. 1 oh, okay. 746. Okay. So what you're saying, is basically you're saying this right at the blue fit blind. Yeah. Mm hmm And I have a second take profit. And the second take profit is at 1.7439. Well, Remember, the strategy is not vetted yet. Well, we don't have a down arrow, so there's no reason to be taking that trade based on this, uh, this indicator system. But I am using a different time frame, right? So okay, so we got seven minutes till uh, market, I guess. Well, it's really so not. nine o'clock. We're coming up on the nine o'clock hour, which we oftentimes see some good movement during that period yeah. of time. Again, let's go back over to the um, arrows, uh, arrow charts. 
And again, you see that uh, we had the up arrow. Again, this zone popped up and after we got into the trade, that, that zone was not there. And so we're, we're gonna, we have to back off on our target. Our stop is still way down here at the uh, below, actually it's below our trend line, which is good. Now, the biggest question will be is that it will stay back and retest as this channel goes towards the right of the screen. We're getting higher lows and higher highs on the channel. Now, the question is, will this thing come and retest this to bounce to come back up here? And it should, it, right now, it's staying inside this channel. So there's really no reason to be getting out. There's no reason. The only reason would be to take the profit because it's up in the zone. But the original profit was right about up in the middle of where this, uh, we want to put this to a 20 pip target again. As our channel gets higher and higher, our target can get a little bit higher too. So bright green, bright green bars. You can see how the bars are a little bit sh uh, shaded here and a little bit shaded here. Uh, Christine, did you ever find out what that meant uh, yesterday? I know you were going to ask uh, about that. Is Christine still here? Uh, she's she's here. And then she may have stepped away for a minute. Yeah, she could have. I'm going to put this target back up here. Our, our entry was at 74.89, so. It, at 74, 75.09 would be the target. So I'm just going to re modify this again for the 20 pips. I've got a theory about those candles. I'm just going to check something out. 75.09, we're looking at here. 1.7509. Okay. There you go. There's where the that's all at the very top of this. I said if it gets anywhere close to inside this, anywhere close to this uh, red zone, I'll I'll bail on this trade. We might get a spike that may come up and just take that right out of the way. The British pound is still showing strength on uh, the higher time frames. The Aussie is also showing a little bit more strength too. So that's why this thing's just going sideways. There's a battle be going between the uh, British and the Aussie uh, currencies. This is a very rule-based uh, indicator system and you're well off to just stay with the rules, playing the trade, stay with the rules, and uh, just let it do its thing and see what happens. The, the history with it has been such that you will win probably 75 to 80% of the time uh, if you just follow the rules. You're not gonna win them all. Uh, I said, this one was, uh, like I said, I hesitate on this because of the report. The one thing about this report today seemed to be somewhat of a non-event. Uh, which is probably helpful in this. But right now it's still showing that it's, uh, uh, we still have green bars. The green bars are still above the moving average line and the arrow is still not, not giving us any down arrows. So right now it's still showing that it has a potential being profitable. Yeah, it's a very rule-based strategy that's very, very easy to follow actually. Uh, and actually, we look and see where this this is where the original entry should have been. I said, I didn't get a very good feel. That was because of the spreads, for one. So from this area right here, from and you can't really go by what the entry was. You need to go by what the arrow said with the 20 pips. So 74.81. So actually, uh, 75.01 is actually really more of where the uh, target should be. Let me go modify that. And that would be the 20 pips, is that right? Yeah, 20, that's the 20 pips. Yes, 70, 17501. Uh, let me move this up to see if I can just get this up to. Uh, 
You might have to. Oh, there it goes. Let me go one. This is two, three, seven, eight, nine. There's one more. There's 7501. Boom. There we go. And this red line should come right down. That's where the target is right there. That's based, the target is based on where the ideal entry is at the close of this candle, at the open of this one. 20 pips up, 40 pips down below. Let me check my stop, make sure that's right. So we have, uh, so 40 pips would be 7441. Uh, 41, right, sorry. So let me modify that one. Did my mouse just stop? Always have a backup. Seventy four forty one, which is going to be right. And that is where the stop is. And actually, it's down a little bit lower than where I had it. So we're still and just let it play its way. Let's play it, play it out. Don't even need to really looking at it. Just let it go. I might just make it up to that uh, 7501. Even it's really not that far away. It's, it's really not beyond the realm of being able to do that. You can see where it's coming down. It's testing the moving average. Wicks down, comes back up again. Everything's still bright green. Everything's still green above the moving average. Moving average is still pointing upward. There's no reason to exit the trade and just believe that the system is set up to where it's either going to work. It's going to work uh, yeah. 75 to 80 percent of the time. And let me show you something with the, some of the results on this. Uh, I set it up with my FX book to see show you so we can see what the results are. What they've been over the last uh, almost two months now, almost month uh, actually, is the results from um, December 13th. You're not logged in. No, I'm gonna sign in. Let me get this set up on my other screen here. And these are the uh, live results of using this technique, trying to stay very disciplined with the. Uh, with the rules. Mm -hmm. Let me show you before and after thing as well. Uh, let me get to this chart here. Let me switch screens. Uh, let's see new share. And this is my FX. This is uh these are the ver this is the same account that you're looking at with our account. And you can see that, that this is starting back in December 14. This is when, let me actually show you something else here. Show you what, what you, why you can't take every trade. Let me go into custom. Let's just go back to, let's just go back six months here. This is when, uh, this is where I started trading this, this account. And I, with this area right here, I was taking every trade. This is when I was learning how to use this indicator. And every, in a, every trade it took that I was around to be taken, I took the trade. And you can see you can't be taken every trade. So after this area right here, I said, okay, now I'm just going to play the rules and just see, just I'm only going to take the, rule, the, the trades that the rules tell me to take. And that's where it started from December 11th. This is where I said, okay, now we're going to start getting the track record to see how well this is going to be by just taking the rules, not taking every trade, just taking the rules. And you can see from December 11th, uh, it's 15. Now, I did not trade at all, hardly at all. Here's this December 22nd. And next trade, you can see from the 22nd to 30th, this is the first time I took, I only had one, I only traded one day between the 22nd 
from the 22nd entry until the 30th of December. And then we got, then I didn't take until January 4th. So mm -hmm. basically we're looking mm -hmm. at probably only about two weeks. We had basically 40 trades, I think it was. So this is, this is showing 132 trades. If I just take it just to where I started being disciplined and uh, specific about what trades I was going to be taking. Start, this is going to be uh, one month. Here we go, 12, 12, 13. That's a Sunday till the till today. Yeah, one, one. Analyze, here we go. And you can see that with this, I had 45 trades and I won 78% of them, 22% uh, I lost. And this was the, uh, these, are the these are the percentages that there we are. So from here, I'm up to right around 13%. You see, it's not, it's, and this is just being very disciplined, uh, just nice, steady little growth, taking about one or two trades a day, wherever, whenever it gives me the opportunity to take them. And that's a verified results of what we're doing here. So for the last, what is that, three weeks worth of data, I guess, right? Three weeks. Yeah, three? yeah basically for all practical purposes from, um, for trading days, it was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let me put this back over here. So that's, I mean, that's fantastic. 13 one, and a half. Two, three, almost. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. This is the 12th trading day since I started this. So basically, I only traded 12 days since December 14th mm -hmm. as I had a week off during Christmas, which I wasn't trading. I wasn't trading much until really the 4th. Yeah. And I really haven't, I really haven't taken, I've only taken, I think, about two or three trades this this whole week mm -hmm. and uh but you know it's uh it's still not bad for no that's 14. good yeah that's great that's, really, that's averaging about you know, well in two weeks time it's uh we're looking at the what the percentages are yeah yeah it's so like yeah. six and a quarter you know um i know both ava and yourself have um said this but i just want to really stress that um you know that following the rules on the uh, bag uh, strategy um, is very very critical um, to the success of that program. Um, but to, you know that and that's like you know the developer would tell you. I mean, and all of the traders that have been very successful with it, it's that if you try to way uh, move away from the rules. You don't do as well, and and you know Al just showed you a great example of that. Yeah, um, I, I think you can you can trade this without following the rules, but you can see what the difference in results are. Like I said, and if you mm -hmm. take every trade, you can't take every trade with this. Right. Uh, it's not based. It's not designed to take every trade. It's designed to take only the trades that follow the strategies. Like I said, there's about ten different strategies. We're only showing you just one right now. Uh, right. Probably each. Uh, week we'll probably introduce maybe another strategy as uh, as we feel comfortable and confident that we understand them ourselves. Uh, we like to try and uh, test them a little bit. These strategies have been proven and tested by the developer. He's uh, and he, if you look at the products uh, list and the uh, he, he goes through each one and explains it uh, to the in the back office of Avoya Prime. As you look in the products list under the setup of the products you'll see where the strategies are. And he just keeps, seems like he adds about one a week. And, and I said, we're just only showing one. We'll show some others uh, as time goes on. Here's something else that we, as we mentioned this yesterday. I'm gonna show it again today since we have some new people in the room. This is our PIP calculator. One thing about trading is it's important to position size your trades correctly. And in this case, we were looking at the British Aussie the British Australian pair. So the British Australian pair, you can see the British Australian pair is basically $6.42 a pip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put $6.42 into this uh, calculator. And let's say you have a, we're just going to use a basic $1,000 account. And you have a 40 pip stop and you're going to risk uh, anywhere between two and 4%, I think is a reasonable risk level. I like, I like three. The developer uses four. Uh, our conservative is two. 
But if you have a 40% risk, this is your, this risk is basically your profit uh, factor, your, your profit regulator. Because if you're taking a 40 pip stop with a 10 pip with a 20 pip target, your gain is going to be, your, your gain of 20 pips is going to be $10, but your risk is going to be 20. But with that size position sizing, it tells you you can take a 0.08 lot size. Now, if you move this up to like a 3% risk, you can see that your risk now is $30. But if you take a 20 pip target with 3% risk, now rather than being a 0.08 lot size, you can take a 0.12 lot size. So what this is saying is that your lot size is dependent on what your risk level is based on. Now, this for a thousand, I'll say this was a $1,500 account. Oops, wrong one. $1,500 account, you'll see that your risk is still, your, your PIP value risk is still the same. Your percentage is still the same, 3%. You're still going to risk $45, but now your lot size is 0.18 because now you have a little bit higher, bigger account. You can take a bigger lot size. If your risk is 3% and you're with 40 PIPs, your target is 20 PIPs, you're going to get half the risk factor. You're going to be half this as a profit. So you're going to actually have 1.5% profit which is going to be half of this 45, which would be about $22.50. If I put this down to, uh, I put this to a, let's say you do a 20 pip risk and 20 pip target, you're, you're, now you're going to have a $45 uh, profit, $45 loss, and now you can go up to like a 3.5 loss size. So you have to figure out what your comfort factor is for your risk factor and then don't trade any more than that. And I just get, right now I just kind of keep, I'm just keeping mine pretty much at 8.2, but as my account uh, gets a little bit bigger, then it's gonna, I'll, I'll be, be in, so right now even with, and actually I haven't upgraded mine right now, but right now I've, I've got a $4,860 account on this one. So $4,860, I'll put that in there. And my risk, my prop, my risk is still 40 pips. And I'm we might want to just reiterate, Al, that it, to be true to the strategy, the the PIP risk is not negotiable. It should be 40, 40 Correct. pip stop with the 20 pip uh, take profit. Right. That's being true to the strategy. If you start deviating off of that, well, then that's um. Yeah, I would keep that that that, that what Eva is saying is exactly right. 40 pip stop, 20 pip target for strategy number one. Your risk factor, you, def you decide what your risk factor is. If you like 2% 2, 2 risk factor, your lot size is going to be 8.38. If you like a 3% risk factor, your lot size is going to be a 0.57 with this account size. Now, I'm, now I'm, with this account size, I'm, right now I'm still using only a 0.2. So I'm way under my, my potential risk. And I'm probably sitting here ready to pay about 1% risk factor. And, and you still saw uh, from, from Al's My FX book how well he did, even being ultra conservative with his risk right. factor. Now, I will raise my risk as I use this program more and more. And as I get a stronger track record, I'll start raising this up to probably 2%. And uh, then I'll be able to increase my lot size. As you increase the lot size, you'll be able to increase your, your profit factors. If you look at, let's see if I can see this one here. Uh, this is where I was looking at, if let's say you have a thousand dollar account and you're looking at 1% per day, uh, you're looking at only a thousand dollars, you're only looking at $10. But let's say you have a $1,500 account. I love this part. <laughs> I love looking yeah. at this spreadsheet. <laughs> so let's say you have a $1,500 account and you're looking at 1% uh, a day. You made fifteen dollars. It's not going to set the world on fire, but you can buy yourself a couple of hamburgers. Next day, you've got fifteen hundred and fifty dollars. Make another one percent. Well, now you've got fifteen dollars and fifteen cents. As you go through the first twenty-one days, now you're looking at this fifteen hundred dollar account. Now you're up three hundred dollars, and rather than making fifteen dollars a day, you're making uh, eighteen. And let's say if you can get two percent a day. Look at that. You can make two percent a day. Now it's fifty. Now it's thirty. And and two percent a day is not hard to do with the strategy if you follow the rules. Mm -hmm. 
And yeah. so as you can see, as you get down 21 days, that $1,500 is now $2,200. And you're making, uh, let's see, is this right? Uh, you're making $44 for every 2%. Well, let's take it down for another, uh, let's see if we can do this here. May I also add that if, you know, if you're selective of the um, alert that you take, right? Because as you see in these examples that Al does in the morning, not every alert is a prime example, you know, like a, you know, something that, you know, that you can categorize them as a one, two, three, as far as like one being excellent, two is okay, and three being, you know, bad or, or not okay, you know, best not to take it and um, try to stick mostly with ones or do a one and a two, um, you know, that also can bump up how much your profitability can be. Exactly. And if you were, if, depending on what kind of, and see, if you can, and if you can, depending on how much money you have, and if you add money to this each month, let's say you can add an extra hundred dollars every month, you add another hundred dollars here. Um, well, let's see. So this would be say oh, okay. 1591. So you had at 1591, you could make a 1691. So we go 1691. If this, you can add $100 a month of saving. Now you're looking at after two months, and if you're looking at 20, 20 to 21 trading days a month, after two trading days, now you're looking at an extra $70 a month. And you've, you've more well, than that's, that's a four days. That's a four days. So that basically after the first month, let's say you had another $100 here. That's 2367. So it's 2467. 2467. Now at the end of this, now you're getting $73. $49, that's $50 a day. That's $250 a week. That's an extra $1,000 a month in your pocket. All you have to do is be disciplined. Just stay disciplined, stay conservative. Pretty exciting. Pretty doable. And it, it doesn't look like a lot at the beginning, but it really does add up over time after three months you're starting to see that you see like here's 44, here's 66. The next one's probably going to be about $88 a day. That's a day. That's enough to buy some groceries for the day. That's enough to pay your electric bill or your mm -hmm. gas bill or, or your, maybe your cell phone bill. It's yeah, and then if you, you keep on compounding, if you keep on compounding by the end of the year, because this is just, you know, a month, right? This, no. this, these are basically every day. This is like 20 days a month. Right. Days. So yeah. if you take the final there, you, which you started with 1500 and now you've over doubled it clearly because it's 3378. And then you end up, you know, in a couple of months, you're now working with $10,000 rather than 1500. Yeah, that's right. And at that point, if you want to comfortably pull a $1,000 a month out, I mean, you're still leaving plenty in there to keep on compounding. I mean, realistically speaking, we're not going to never touch it. <laughs> right. I mean, the whole point of doing this in the first place is to have that little bit of extra. So it's not like we're going to keep it in there for the next two years without touching it. So when it hits to a certain point, if you're comfortable pulling out 500 and leaving the rest to keep on compounding for another week or two, that's the key. Yeah. And the thing that really, as and if you look at the, the graph on this, it goes real slow, real slow, and it starts going up a little bit, and then all of a sudden it starts getting become exponential. Yeah. Uh, but it's the, the part that people have the hardest time with is getting from this low part all the way over to here before it starts going before it starts going up. Because it seems like, oh, I'm not getting any place. I'm not getting anything. You know, there's a great book called The Slight Edge and talks about that power of compounding and that yeah. little things make a difference. As long as you can keep that little bit of profit going, eventually it grows. And then once you get down near the near the end of this, that's when it starts to really cut. And then as it starts to come, you really start seeing the power of compounding. But you have to get, you can't do it unless you get through this part first. Exactly. You can't get to this until you get through this part. Yeah. I mean, this is a hypothetical, but it is still very realistic. Right. Yeah. All you have to do is it be certainly is. 
It yeah, is, and you can when, and again, like I said, with, with this pip calculator, what I would do is if you if you're trading this, I would be looking at all the different pairs, find out what the pip standard pip value is, and then when you set up your charts. Uh, let's see where's my chart here. Then when you set up your charts, you just go to like here's your British pound pair. And you come up here to on your Mediterranean for now. If let me just show you something here that a lot of people may not know. What happened to my chart? Let me just close this one down here. There it is. It just popped up. Let me just make this big. Up here in the corner, and if you look in, let's see if I can. I'm just trying to make this thing. So you can see this upper corner. We we can see it. Can you see the upper corner? Yep. Oh, okay. I, I can I can see it. Let me move the slide over here a little bit. There we go. If you see this upper corner, you'll see like this little, little arrow here. And this is if you click on that arrow, you see that box goes away. If you click on the arrow again, the sell buy box comes in. And a lot of times I I don't oftentimes I don't do a I just do a I get the arrow, I see where the price is, I do just do a market order. But up here, you can you can adjust this up here for each pair. You can put whatever you want to have a, your standard default. So if you look at your British Aussie, it says 642, and you'll say, okay, the lot size on that is, is uh, point, uh, in this case, a point zero three eight. I can just go a 0 0.38 up in that, keep it there, and now that's set. So that way, when you get the alert, you say, oh, I already have my Price, my lot size already calculated for this pair. Now, if I go over to the Euro US, it's going to be a different lot size because the prices are, the PIP values are different. A Euro US is $10. So that's going to give me a smaller lot size because the PIP values are more. So you can adjust each one of those. Here's something else that some people may or may not know about this. If you go to your toolbar and you go to options and you go to the trading tab, trade tab, this just tells you what you can do for you. You can have uh, all your lot size by default and you just make that 20, or you could say the last price used on that pair. It would be whatever it is. Uh, but this is this one that's really important is that this one click trading. If you have that checked with the check mark there, as soon as you hit any one of these buttons, the buy or the sell, it's going to take the trade. If you have this unchecked, If you have it unchecked, if you hit it, there's going to be a box that's going to come up and say, do you really want to do that? And you say, okay, I accept. And you say, okay. And so then basically when you go to click on it, it's not going to take the trade automatically. You, you have to accept the trade. I usually have it one-click trading, so I just use the one-click trading on it. And so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, but I... Uh, but what you could do and what I, I would urge everybody to do is go through each one of these pairs. You should have the, uh, some, most of you should have the PIP calculator that a lot of the people that I see in the room, I know have it. Some people may or may not, if you need it, let me know, we can put it in, uh, put it in there for you. Um, if you have the newer version of Excel, this thing will drop down with a little drop down arrow and it'll just, you pick the pair and it automatically puts it in there for you. But this is uh, really important to make sure you position size uh, properly. And that's about it. Uh, and we're coming up near the end of our session here. Do we have any Alex, questions? Just for a moment, can I just ask a quick question before you move off this page? No way. Um, are these the, the recommended pairs uh, by the developer? No, have. these these are uh, these are not. These are just the all, these are all the the major and minor pairs that we have, and we just have the standard pip value for them. The developer on this uh, particular uh, the developer basically he likes the British pairs, he likes the Euro pairs, and then the U.S. pairs uh, that are not. So basically, as we let's see, do we have? Well, I know when I was watching his video. Uh, he had the the six GBP pairs and four uh -huh. euro pairs up. Correct. And he had uh, gold, and I think that was it. 
That's well, all. Gold, yeah. gold in the U.S. So uh, it does have the U.S. Or index. The, the U.S. index. That's right. And yeah. that's that's it. But I was just wondering if um, these are these are the pairs that he he's got seven pairs that he has, and um, you've seen my screens, right? The, I'm looking at it. Yes. Yeah. So I, and you can just look down here at the bottom. Uh, of, and if you want to take a snapshot of this, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. We have the British Aussie, the British CAD, the British Swiss, the British Yen, the British New Zealand, and the British USD. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six British pairs. And then they have four Euro pairs, which is basically going to cover the British, the Aussie, the Yen, and the New Zealand. New Zealand, okay. And then the last but not least is the U.S. pairs is the U.S. yen, which now that way you have because you already have the euro yen. So basically, you have the yen with the euro. You have the yen with the British. I don't think he had the U.S. yen on his. I know he had four euro. I don't remember any other U.S. pairs on there though. Oh, uh, well, maybe I'll have to double check that then. The pound, yeah. And they, and they did have the gold, and he did have yes, the S&P right. index. That's and remember, right. the gold and the S and P were on five minute charts, not fifteen minute charts. That's right, exactly. Okay, so it's only the US yen that's uh, uh, that you're running that he is not. Okay. Okay, that's that's good. So yeah, yeah I'm taking a, a snapshot of that, and I'll be setting mine up this weekend. Yeah. Um, and I believe uh, Leslie will also be setting hers up, so you may want to take a snap of this as well, Leslie, for the pairs that. Um, He's recommending, the developer Nathan is recommending to start his strategy one, uh, other than the US yen. Yeah, so you can pretty much just uh, scan these and you can see where they are, what kind of, uh, this is the one that we're still in right now. I mean, it's still hanging in there, okay. It's not profitable yet, but it's not, doesn't have a big, it had a little bit of a drawdown, but right now we're not worrying about it. It just, it's either gonna take the target or not. I was in one the other day. I think I took it either yesterday morning or the day before, and it just finally closed out last night. But that's how narrow these ranges have been these last couple of days of this week. Mm -hmm. So just have to get this, let it, this, let it do its thing. Uh, take the trade uh, with the rules and just let it, just let it do. You don't have to sit there and watch it all day long. And sometimes you're better off and just, you know, take the trade and walking away from it. Let it, let it decide what, what let it play out the way it is. Uh, Make it like if, I, if I if I if I saw where this thing started, if it were right here and get me a, a red zone, I would just exit it. As long as I know there's still some room to the upside, I'll still keep this one going. But if it if I get a red zone, if this thing pulls back and gives me another red zone after I'm already in it and flow, then I'll get out of the trade. Yeah. And on that note, yeah. And so. Uh, any last questions before we leave here today? I'll tell you, we'll keep it going for about another four minutes. We'll let the U.S. market open up, see if we get any new alerts, and we'll take a look and see what it may, uh, see what happens. We'll just let it go for another four minutes. We'll keep watching it, and uh, we'll see how this trade does. Okay. And we'll see, we'll should get, if it does get a, anything on the, mm -hmm. at 9.30, we should get the alert pop up and we'll take a look at it. We'll either take the trade or we won't. You know, no, you can't mess up your son, you know. <laughs> so this one's still hanging. This is the British, British uh, Aussie that we're in. It's still hanging in there. Yeah, let's see what it does. This is the right here is where the ideal. This is basically the candle that we should have got that we should have been filled on. Mm -hmm. We didn't get quite the fill that we wanted, so we don't have the target that we would like to have. But I would say basically that the 40 pips and 20 pips is based on what I would call the ideal entry that the arrow generates. That's what the back testing has all been done. Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. so that's the reference that we're using. Now, if you get a bad fill, you're not going to get the 20 pips, or you may still get 20 pips. But if you're coming up in the zone, you may just want to back off that expectation a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
I said, I still look at this as being a trap zone. That's for the, we have the trend line coming down. We have a, the, we it have, it would have, if we get a break through this AC trend line, it's going to have to, in order to get, it's got to get past this A in order for it to uh, get up a little bit higher to where it would get up into this area. That's why I'd be looking at this being a trap. So that's why I'm not, I would not give this a whole lot of room. Um, again, about halfway between where the A and the C is, that's pretty much the middle of the trap zone. And then you subtract whatever you, again, look at the spread on this. This is 2.7. I just saw three just a couple seconds ago. So it's, it's ranging about, there's three, three and a half, almost three and a half. So this thing has a pretty wide spread range on it. That's why it's going to be a little bit tougher to get that target at this point because of that spread. And this thing, I mean, they're changing, they're moving the spread around uh, every, you know, they're, they're, they're expanding and contracting the spread by at least a pip, pip and a half every few seconds. That tells me that there's not a lot of volume right now. And there's a lot of indecision which way this thing's going to go. And we just got an alert for the Euro Yen. Let's take a look at that real quick. So here's the Euro Yen. See where I'm still sharing my uh, arrow charts, correct? Um, you're, yeah. There we go. There we are. All right, here it is. So let's measure it out. Here's here's our here's our candle. Here's our entry. Do we have 20 pips to the upside? I see six. Let's see 34 too. Yeah, there's only six pips. Not taking the trade. Remember, guys, you need 20. You need no. 20. Now, if I had this, if this arrow was down here, mm -hmm. I think it'd be. Uh, if we had this bounce, and, we, and let's say we had an arrow off of, say, this candle. There's our 20 pips. I would take that trade. Mm -hmm. But the fact that we had strong, strong candle up, and we didn't get it, it didn't generate it till here, and we're so close to this, I would say I'll just pass. I'd be more apt to wait for it to come up and bounce like this arrow did, to bounce, to get the 20. And with that, it looks like it's uh, the market is now open. We just got the alert. There's a euro. Okay, we just got a euro yen. Uh, was that the one we're on? That's what uh, we're on. That was so, one we yeah. just looked at. So yeah. we're just decided we're not going to take that. I decided I'm not going to take that. Doesn't follow the rules. So I'm just going to walk away from that one. And that's about all I have to say for today. Any other questions before we go? I thank everybody for being here and uh, have a great weekend. Stay safe, stay warm, and we'll see you on Monday. Thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. You too. Uh, Be well, you. everyone. God bless.